If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, first in the quiet of our hearts, and then together in the spoken confession. Merciful and gracious God, we confess our sin to you. We confess how easy it is for us to begin to adopt the attitudes and actions of the world around us, to let our lives be shaped by contemporary culture rather than by your call. Forgive us. We confess how often we think of our own interests first, more concerned with our own status and well-being than with the well-being of others. Forgive us. We confess that we do not always acknowledge you as Lord, trusting in our own abilities and following our own goals rather than submitting ourselves to your will and your call. Forgive us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that our Lord would transform us, change us from the inside out, so that our words and our lives would bring honor and glory to Him, our Savior and Lord. By the same power that brought Jesus back from the dead, He assures us that our sin has been paid for, and we are forgiven. As a called and ordained servant of the Word, I proclaim to you today that reality. Our sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen may be seated as we hear from God in his word. The Old Testament reading for today is from Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them, as a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them. So will I look after my sheep. I will res rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another, 
I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will print among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. The power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every name that is invoked not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 through 46. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, You who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, When did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I invite the kids to come on forward for this morning's children's message. Any parents who would also want to join, come on up. But children, come on, find your dots. Good. Oh my gosh, I am losing my voice. I am sorry. Good morning. Oh, it's gonna be rough. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So I'm gonna have to spoil Pastor Sermon just a little bit because he's gonna ask the question, "Who is King?" And in order for me to do this, I kind of gotta answer that. So, who is King? Oh my goodness. <laughs> who is King? 
Jesus. Okay, I'm really going to need help in this now. So the thing is that Jesus is king in all things. It doesn't matter what is happening. Jesus is king. So when you don't have a voice, say Jesus is king. <laughs> when it's snowing, <laughs> when we have to wear masks, when you're eating turkey and stuffing, in all things, thank you for your help. Okay, so to celebrate that Jesus is king, and more importantly, that we are children of the king. Oh my gosh, my voice sounds like a character. Okay, here is crowns for all of you. You are a child of the king. 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 And if I would have had more time, I would have made him for all of you because we are all children of the king. Let's pray. Oh my goodness gracious. Dear God, thank you so much for being our king. Help us to remember just how much you love us. Amen. And thank you, Martha. So as we conclude our Forget Google, Ask God series this morning, Google absolutely confirms the direction that we have been heading, by and large, throughout this series. Because as we ask this question, our final question for this series, okay, Google, who's king? Google was absolutely confounded by the question. Didn't know where to go. Google was all over the board. In fact, I'm not even going to share any of the top results because by and large, they were mostly nonsensical. They went everywhere. So as we ask this question, on this last Sunday of the church year, on Christ the King Sunday, and we ask, who's king? Let's go where we all know we need to go. Straight to God. Now, for us today, it's going to be helpful, I think, to start by thinking a little bit about this whole idea of king. Because kings are, by and large, as we think about it today, more something of the past, not something necessarily that we're living with or fully understand culturally in our time today. We think more often of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table or kings that are in fairy tales or some of the realities of our Old Testament history and some of the kings of Israel, including great King David. So I think it's going to be helpful for us to try to refresh this idea of what it means to be a king. As we think about it in terms of our world and our lives today. So I'm going to give you a moment to think about this. If you're comfortable talking with those that are closest to you, feel free to do that. But give some thought to what does it mean to be a king? Take a moment, please. So what do you think? What does it mean to be a king in today's terms? Mary? Okay, that you have authority and power over people. 
All right? How else might we describe this or understand it? Brian. Okay, so there's responsibilities that go along with being a king. Responsibility for the people under your care, for their safety, their protection, giving thanks for them, and things like that. Good. How else? What does it mean to be a king today, Gene? You don't have to answer to anyone, okay? What else? Sandy. Okay, so you weren't voted in. You were anointed or put in place. All right, Tam? Make your own rules. So, given some of these descriptions, and I think you're right on, given some of these descriptions, Who's your king? Who is king in your life? Really? Think about that seriously. Who is king in your life? Now, to be honest, as I thought about this, for me, there are more times than I care to admit that I want to play king in my own life. I want to be the boss. I want to make the rules. I don't want anybody else telling me what to do, what to think, where to go, how to live my life. I don't want that. I want to have the say. I want to be the king. Can any of you relate to that? That's our sinful nature, isn't it? And we talk about it all the time, but it's real. It is so real. Because it really is a, a struggle not to be self-centered. It's a struggle not to want everything in life to revolve around me and around my desires, my wants, my needs. Basically, my desire to be king. And that's a struggle that, that transcends race and color and creed and economic standing and politics and so much more. Dare I say, there is not one person, not one, who doesn't deal with this struggle of being king in our own lives, at least to some degree. It's a struggle that we were born with. We inherited. And it's a struggle that we've got to deal with day in and day out through the course of our entire lives. So if we are really going straight to God and asking God, who's king? What do you think he's going to say? You know the answer. Martha gave it to you already. Thanks, Martha. No, we know that, right? And today's sermon, it, it's not intended to be a bag of tricks or some surprises, but it's thinking about some of the reminders of these basics of our life and who we are called to be as children of God, as children of the King, the one we know to be the ruler of all. Now, God lays it out almost back at the very beginning, very clearly. 
very plainly, on Mount Sinai, he said to his people, you shall have no other gods before me. The first of the Ten Commandments, that there is to be no one else that has first place in your life. No one else is to be king but me, is what he was saying. We find that kind of language throughout the Old Testament. It fills the Psalms, this idea of our God as king. We see it in the New Testament. St. Paul talks about this. We hear it in 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16, when St. Paul wrote this. He said, Jesus, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. And John, in Revelation, we hear this. Revelation 17, the Lamb will triumph over those who wage war against them because he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers. And then again, in Revelation 19, on his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In today's epistle reading from Ephesians chapter 1, St. Paul again uses a number of words and phrases that have us acknowledging God as king. So I'm going to read a couple of these verses, 19 to 22. And I want you to listen for those words, those phrases, as he starts out with God the Father and then moves also to Jesus. Paul writes, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. In other words, the Father made Jesus king. King over everything. And so, on this Christ the King Sunday, what do we do with that? What does that mean? mean exactly for us in our lives and the lives that we have been called to live. That we acknowledge, that we believe, that we look to Jesus as our King. Well, for one, we can and we should, and I would say we even need to repent of those times that we continue to try to sit on that particular throne of our lives and continue to grasp for the kingship, being the boss, having the say, making the rules, having it my way. But the reality is, I'm not trying to let this sermon just be a beatdown because I know I've seen it and see it every day that all of you live lives that acknowledge Jesus as King. You live it, you believe it, you show it and demonstrate it by the lives that we lead out of our love for our King. So what does that look like, specifically, in the day-to-day -day of our lives? Or what can that look like? 
as we acknowledge and perhaps even worship Jesus as our King day in and day out. I once again want to invite you to think about that or at your comfort level talk with those around you. But to consider in very practical terms, what does that look like to have Jesus as your King? Take a moment, please. So what does it look like, or what can it look like, to acknowledge and worship Jesus as King in the day-to-day -day of our lives? Some practical ideas or thoughts. Gene? Gene? Okay, so that we, we seek to adopt some of those characteristics that we know of Jesus. And he lays out for us in his word. Uh, you know, the, what you started down was some of those fruit of the Spirit. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, added forgiveness, understanding. So we take those things on in our lives. Good. How else? Greg. Greg. What was the first word you said? We look to him to see what truth is. So we don't try to come up with that on our own or make up our own truth. But as we acknowledge him and worship him as king, we trust that what he is giving us is truth. And so we look to him for that. Very good. What else? Art? that Jesus is center of the universe, and we believe that. We live like that, that he is the one. Okay? Who else? Brian. Okay, so if Jesus is on the throne of your heart, what that, how that plays out is that he guides our thinking. And those things that we do in our lives, how we go about them, it changes our attitudes, that we trust him, that he is the one who helps us carry out some of what he says to us in his word, don't worry, or don't be afraid. Trust me with these matters in life, which we all do all the time, right? <laughs> uh, that comes back to that repentance thing again and the, the struggle that we have. But we fight the good fight, knowing that we are children of the king. And when we ourselves or the devil or the things of this world take that throne of our hearts, 
we need to acknowledge that, recognize that, and dethrone the one who does not belong there and let Jesus back on. So good. Good thought on that, Brian. How else can that look, Ron? Okay, good. So starting the day in devotion and prayer, listening to what he has to say, ending it in the same way, a wonderful way to acknowledge him and let him take that seat on the throne where he belongs. Very good. Other ways, practical things for our lives. David? Okay, so acknowledge his divinity, that he's not just a human king, a ruler, but he is so much more. And all that that means, that he is God. And what ties us into that? His death, his resurrection, and all that that means for us, right? I mean, that's all intimately woven in as we acknowledge that divine king that he is. Very good. Any other thoughts? Yvonne. Very good. Yeah, I was hoping somebody would grab that. That, that gospel reading for today that we as his subjects, he lays out for us here in, in Matthew 25, by example, both positive and scary, of saying, you know what? When you do what? When you feed the hungry, you give a drink to the thirsty, you show hospitality, you clothe the naked, you take care of the sick, you visit those in prison, who are we serving? the king. And so as we acknowledge Jesus as king, we're going to do these things. And even in COVID times, it may look a little different. We may have to be a little more creative with how that works, but it doesn't stop. There's nothing in this world that can stop us from being the children of God that we have been called to be, to be the church the church under our king. And so we look to serve and give from what we have given. And we can add some of the practical things that, that we've done and are doing again over the last number of weeks and in the weeks to come. Some of the tab Habitat for Humanity builds, the giving to the community assistance, the Thanksgiving baskets we're putting together, either the non-perishables or or money for turkeys. The Operation Christmas Child, all the shoeboxes through Samaritan's Purse, the hundred plus that we gathered here and sent off. Now the Orchard Place giving tree that's up, another very practical way that we are able to serve God's people. And in so doing, serve the King in the simplest of ways but in the truest of ways. To know that we do and give and serve, not out of this sense of obligation, not driven by guilt of, boy, you know, what should I be doing more? But to say, Jesus as King, thank you that I can serve you. That as King in my life, I am able to give from all that I know has come from you in the first place and say thank you as I do what you invite me to do, that I get to join you in your work in this world. And for us today, in this time, and in this place, a world so much in need of seeing love, 
of having a sense of hope. Friends, it's a beautiful way and, or a beautiful thing when we do these things. And it is a, a beautiful way to conclude this series, I would say. A beautiful way to wrap up this church year. A beautiful way to, to move into Thanksgiving week and the start of a, a new season as we travel down the road of Advent toward Christmas and a, a whole month that is traditionally a time of giving and serving and in so many different ways. Beautiful opportunities for us as children of the King to show the world that there is hope in the midst of all that's trying to beat us down and to point us in different directions to say no. We are children of the King the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. So the what now for today, if you want to grab your bring it home insert, it's also up on the screen, two things. One, be thoughtful about stepping down from the throne and letting Jesus be the rightful king of your life. And second, look for opportunities this week and in the weeks to come to serve our king as you serve his people. To our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, as St. Paul declared a little later in his letter to the Ephesians, I want to invite you to join our voices together as we finish today, today's message and today's series as Christ the King Sunday, as we proclaim together Jesus as King. If you would, join me in speaking these words of acclamation and of proclamation of Jesus as King from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to the power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen and amen.
I invite all who are able to please stand. And we join in confessing our faith using again one of the ancient creeds this morning, the Apostles' Creed. A statement of faith that is drawn from the truths of God's very word that speak and proclaim the mysteries of our King, this God whom we worship, whom we serve, and whom we follow. And again today, we have that privilege of joining our voices with those who have gone before us and with those who stand with us in these days and in these times, standing firmly on the truth of our King and His Word. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated. And as we worship God through our offerings, offerings given here in the baskets in the atrium or given online, please join me in reiterating some of these precious promises of our God. Friends in Christ, we know that all we have, all we are, and all we do is a gift from God. God does not need our gifts, but he knows that life is better when we share generously from all that we have of our time, talents, and treasures. As we give our offerings, a tenth or so, we are giving thanks to God for His abundant gifts to us. Heavenly Father, give us Your grace to share generously, and in doing so, be refreshed in You. Amen. For our prayers today, uh, quite a number of requests. I want to pray for a school family who's dealing with many relational and health-related issues. Prayers for this family and this little first grader during this difficult time in life. For Linda Frerich's sister Susan and her husband, who had been diagnosed with COVID. Uh, Susan was hospitalized a week ago Saturday while her husband was able to return home. And Susan is still, as of today, in ICU. For Joe Sar's sister, Julie, as well as for Joe. Uh, Joe flew out to California to be with her. Julie uh, has had many, many uh, medical issues that are uh, somewhat mysterious, but there's a plan to try to move forward. We continue to pray for the miraculous and for Julie's healing. For a congregational member whose sister's husband is degrading her and trying to ruin their marriage, Prayers for God to repair this relationship and help both of them. From Jim Found, a prayer request for Sharon Yang, who brings the students here from Taiwan. Uh, she's dealing with immune system issues and will be starting chemotherapy. Prayers that her response to her disease will be a witness to the students and teachers at Concordia Middle School in Taiwan. Uh, another missionary-related request, two of them, from Tim and Deb Meyer. Uh, they're missionary friends with a little girl who had heart surgery. They are preparing to return to the country they serve, and that will be happening on December 1st. And the friends of these missionary friends who were imprisoned, uh, there's this update. Ken and Mary have been released and have arrived in the neighboring country, and have been reunited with their kids who they were separated from. The international community intervened and put pressure on the country's government to release the couple. Then we also have uh, 
a number of deaths uh, in, within our community of faith. We pray for Kitty Schultz and her family with the ongoing questions surrounding her grandson Riley's death. Uh, more autopsies have pointed toward his death being ruled a homicide. Riley's going to be buried once again on Monday, tomorrow at 1 o'clock at Loveland Burial Park. And Kitty wanted to invite, uh, wanted me to extend an invitation to anyone who would like to attend this graveside service of commending Riley once again to our Lord. For Jody Minor and her family at the death of her nephew, Holt Hauser, Thursday morning. Prayers especially for Holt's wife, Shauna, and their four children. For our Lord's strength and comfort in this very difficult time. For Ron and Leslie Husingfeld, son-in-law Marco and their family at the death of Marco's father, Arturo, on Thursday. And for Sean Becker, a former member here at Emmanuel at the death of her husband, Bill. Prayers for comfort for Sean and her family. Then some prayers of thanks. Uh, prayer of thanks with, uh, for Jamie Sweet at uh, the wonderful progress she is making following her breast cancer surgery. In fact, uh, to my surprise, Jamie is here this morning. So we give thanks for good progress and, and pray that things continue to move along in a positive way. Prayers of thanks that Jim Pratt's surgery on Monday went well. Uh, continued prayers for healing, patience, and strength for both Jim and Sandy. And then prayers of thankfulness for the amazing report on Beth Bianco's dad. Uh, initial report for Bill was that he was not going to be able to put any weight on his broken ankle. Uh, after that, an orthopedic surgeon ended up putting him in a walking cast and said surgery would not be needed. So thanks be to God for this surprising and very welcome news. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, from the beginning of time to the end of eternity, you have chosen to use your power and majesty to love us, to redeem us, to shape us as your people. King of kings and Lord of lords, you became weak so you could confront the strength of sin and death, confounding their ridicule with your resurrection. Because of that gift, we come to you and place into your care the many people on our hearts and minds today with prayer requests that have been mentioned and the many which have not. Bring your compassion to bear on each and every need with healing, comfort, guidance, encouragement, and peace. Bring your joy to every celebration and the gifts of life, love, and healing. Spirit of God, resting upon us, may your power inflame us with your peace. May your peace touch us with your grace. May your grace fill us with your hope. May your hope lead us into your kingdom. We place the matters of our country and world before you, including President Trump, our elected and appointed leaders, those serving in the armed forces, those serving in various community service and protection agencies, such as our firefighters, first responders, law enforcement, and health care. Thank you for those who serve us in these various ways, and we pray that you would protect them and also guide them. Open their hearts to lead and serve from the basis of your truth and your love and not out of selfishness or personal agendas. God in community, holy in one, may your word be on our lips as we pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And as many of you know, here at Emmanuel, we celebrate the Lord's Supper each and every week. And we do so not a ritual or tradition or because we're supposed to, but because this is a gift, a gift from our King, a King who loves us, who cares for us, 
and provides for us at our deepest levels of need. And so we come to receive what our Lord and our King knows we need again today. Our Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. If there are any of you here today wondering whether or not you should come and receive the Lord's Supper, would you ask yourself these four questions? First, do you know Jesus? Do you trust in him, believe in him as your Lord and Savior and King? Secondly, do you acknowledge the sin and brokenness and messiness of your own life and desire to receive the forgiveness and healing that our Lord provides in this sacrament? Third, do you believe Jesus' words? Profound, mysterious words that we can't fully understand or explain. But do you believe it to be true? That what we receive today goes far beyond just bread and wine. That it is also the very body and blood of Jesus in, with, and under these simple elements. And finally, fourth, would it be your intention with the Holy Spirit at work in your heart that you would seek to serve your King in all that you are and in all that you do in order to share his love, to bring his hope to bear, and to point others to Jesus. If you answered yes to these questions, this gift is for you. We'll have our two serving stations on either side of the communion rail. Children and young people not yet instructed in the Lord's Supper, you're invited to come to receive a blessing. Or if there are adults who would prefer to receive simply a blessing, please come with your hands folded to indicate that. Otherwise, have your hands cupped to receive the bread. We also have gluten-free and wafers available. If you'd like those, please indicate to the server before we, receive, before we offer the bread. would ask that you simply follow the direction of the ushers. They will lead you where you need to go. Out of love and concern for our sisters and brothers gathered here together, I would ask that you wear your masks as you make your way to the communion stations and maintain uh, about a six-foot spacing between your family units. And as we commune together, join in the singing of hymns as we remember and celebrate and acknowledge Jesus as our King. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always.
I invite all who are able to please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you steadfast in His grace now and always. Amen. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with the healing power of this gift of life. You've filled us with joy through your love and grace. We've tasted of your goodness and of your glory. Now strengthen us by the grace and forgiveness we've received in this sacrament that we may live holy and godly lives as witnesses in this world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And you may be seated for just a moment. And indeed, he is king of all. Thank you again for joining us today on this Christ the King Sunday. And I pray that as we think more about what that means, that Jesus not only desires to be, but is king for us, how that will play out in the days to come as we live as children of the King. Uh, by way of a couple of announcements, uh, first of all, a reminder, Thanksgiving Day worship will be happening here, both in person and virtually. That'll be at 9 o'clock Thanksgiving Day. Encourage you to join us and start the day out uh, with Thanksgiving to the one that we know provides all that we are and all that we have. The Orchard Place Giving Tree is up and ready for you to take a tag or two or three as we reach out to our neighbors just to the south and provide Christmas gifts and our Savior's love. I know a number of you have been picking those up, but check those out. That'll be up over the next couple of weeks, and it is a great opportunity to be uh, engaged in a very real way in serving the King right here in our own community. You may have heard by this point in time that uh, Colorado is going red starting on Tuesday, or Larimer County at least, going red at 5 o'clock on Tuesday. I just want to let you know that as leaders and staff, we have already started talking about this last night, and we're going to continue uh, processing what that means for us as we look to move forward. So I encourage you simply to stay tuned at this point in time. Uh, if you have any input to offer, would certainly welcome that as we uh, grapple with some of these challenging decisions of our times these days. Uh, beyond that, the email updates are the, the easiest, best way to stay up to date this coming week. There'll probably be just one with uh, the holiday coming up. But if you are not already on that email list and would like to be, we've got some cards on the coffee cart. Fill one of those out with your email address, your name, drop it in one of the baskets out here in the atrium, and we'll get you added to that list. But that's the way to find the, the latest and most up-to-date information about uh, what's coming up, what's happening, and the, the many opportunities we have in these days to serve, to give, and to be God's people for this time and place. So, I hope you can join us again on Thursday for Thanksgiving, and then on Sunday, we begin the new church year, the season of Advent.
with our new series, and that is entitled Life in the Present Future, Musings of the Prophet Isaiah. So we're going to be looking at Isaiah and what he has to say throughout this season of Advent in uh, not too dissimilar of times, uh, the time of the exile, and uh, some of the challenges God's people were facing there, some timely words that he is still speaking to us today. So, go in peace. Serve the Lord.